Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at SOBs here in New York City. Tonight, vocalist Maya Azucena tonight is performing selections off her CD, Cry Love, her third CD, and it's pretty much a continuation of where she is both mentally, physically, spiritually, and she's a very, very, very focused sister. In fact, over the last year, she's appeared on MTV Made. She's done extensive traveling all over the world. In fact, she just returned from Tanzania when she just promoted the pitfalls of domestic violence and sexual abuse, something that she's very, very adamant and passionate about. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about the trip, we're going to talk about the CD, we're also going to sit down and talk about the importance of her continuing being a very important independent soul artist and how it is right now she's been able to use Twitter and MySpace and social networking to reach out to her fans both here in New York as well as abroad. Cry Love, we're back again two years later and you've had a lot happen here in the last year in addition to your record and you've been touring and what's the vibe of this record versus your last record? Um, Cry Love, in my opinion, is the project that I have been trying to make from the beginning. So the difference to me is that I feel that it really expresses a complete thought musically. It shows my musical range and dynamic it shows um where i'm coming from as a songwriter and i just think it represents the production value that i want you know people to receive my previous records i think i felt like they were cool but they all had a little disclaimer attached to them in, in my eyes this particular project i feel completely proud of i feel it really delivers you know and for what it's worth I know I have my own sound which is unique doesn't sound cookie cutter which poses its own pluses and minuses but I really feel that um, if you listen to cry love you know you, you you will respect it and I understand that you are still with Christian and Ivan so the nucleus of your songwriting team and your producers pretty much kind of they pretty much know what you're thinking about musically 
Christian Verhallen in particular is my main co-songwriter. He's the guitarist of the group, and he uh, produced a the lion's share of the Cry Love CD. And Ivan, um, my drummer, has also like contributed so much to what I consider the Maya Asusena sound. You know these having a band and having players that have stayed with me through the years have allowed me us to have our own sound and also to develop it further you know these uh, these songs are very interesting i mean there's a track on here with living color great vernon reed and you and chris rob do one of my favorite donny hathaway records i mean there's a lot of stretches and there's a lot of different messages on this record you know, the song with Chris Robb, uh, which is, you know, Little Ghetto Boy, um, was really powerful for me. Um, I feel that in order for me to do a cover, it has to be extremely meaningful to me. You know, I'm not really out there trying to do cover music, but if it really reflects something, you know, that I represent, I'm about it. And Little Ghetto Boy was a duet that, I, it was nagging at me, like, I want to do a duet with Chris. And Chris Robb, also the keyboardist, who is an artist and musician and producer and a singer in his own right, um, is also one of my key band members. So it was nagging at me like Little Get a Boy as a duet, Little Get a Boy as a duet. But at the very final hour, that song almost did not make it on the CD. Because when we recorded it, I felt it was too long. And, but I was also unwilling to compromise and cut it and I didn't want to fade it out. My vision for that song was to have an orchestral piece sneak in. So right when you felt the song was over, this orchestra would come in. And I literally couldn't afford to, to hire <laughs> the strings players. So we were mixing down the record and literally, it's like, this is not gonna make it on the project. And I, as a compromise, I'm a little bit of a purist. I was like, let me try to give it to a keyboardist that he has a classical background and see if he could compose on the keyboards some convincing strings. And my good friend Steve Wallace, that also produced uh, the song Run Into the Light, he has a background in classical piano and opera. And I told him literally, I was like, here the cello, and I hear the, the violin come in here. And I gave him all the notes. He sent it to me, and I'm in mixing. We're mixing the rest of the album. So I put headphones on. I'm listening in the side room, and I start crying. I was like, he achieved my vision for this song with flying colors. And to me, that song is so important. We wrote that end section, you know, believe in yourself. And to me, the fact that a CD can end in with that message do you walk away from that believe in yourself and that to me i don't know i was very proud of that <laughs>
you've had a very, very busy four or five months. You went to Tanzania and you went over there, you, you performed and you also were over there doing a lot of humanitarian efforts and works and tell me about what was going down. I'll start by saying that I kind of came to this conclusion that music and singing is my superpower. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there's other people have various powers and how they will contribute to helping. But for me, you know, when things feel impossible and hopeless and like the thing that I reach for is like, I, I have to sing, I have to sing. So for me, music is my way of contributing and helping and, and going in and be like, let's do this. So I got invited to Tanzania. The initial show was in support of an abuse and rape crisis center that um, is kind of groundbreaking for their culture to have. Um, and there was a concert to raise awareness about what they're doing. And so that was the first show I did. And while I was out there, I was invited to partake in some more community efforts like, uh, you know, speaking to teenagers, uh, uh, Mama C, Mama Charlotte O'Neill, who is uh, a Black Panther that's relocated to Tanzania. She hosted a incredible community um, conversation with about 100 people from teens to in their 60s, all contributing to the conversation. And we talked about domestic violence and how locally they can you know, affect a po more positive outcome, these all kinds of things. So while I was there, I was able to be involved in all those things with music as my, you know, vehicle, you know, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. What was it like performing with artists, African artists that didn't know your music? I mean, there had to be kind of a, 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 a language barrier, but music is also the universal language also. The, you're speaking the truth. Music is a universal language. I have literally played with artists that don't speak English. I, I, I'll say, like, when I played in Italy, I played in Napoli. And these cats literally didn't know when I was saying, bridge, or it's over. <laughs> I was like, finale, finale. I'm like, come on, we over. They would just keep playing. But they understood the music. They understood the music. Music totally was our bond. And so in Africa, I had a band in Africa learn my music. I showed up. They knew the changes. They knew the breaks. They knew everything. And I rehearsed with them, and they did a fantastic job, you know? So this cross-cultural, you know, relation through the arts is, is really a phenomenal way to, to, to prove how much we have in common, regardless of how much we have that's different, you know? What did Maya learn from this trip? Um, oh wow, I mean, there's so many things I learned from every trip that I take. I mean, I'm, I really try to receive as much as I give, you know, so, wow. I was really um, humbled to have been invited to speak on very, very, very local concerns. The fact that I was trusted to share and uh, express with some authority on subject matters of domestic violence and abuse and rape in their community was very humbling. Um, it, it taught me really, it continues, I'm constantly learning how powerful music is in terms of breaking ground with people and it's just, for me, so much more than just entertainment, you know. Entertainment, yes. Quality, absolutely. But there's something, like, spiritual about it that, that is what I resonate with, you know. I just want to see you.
you are an independent artist and over the years I have seen you grow to a whole I mean I've seen you grow without a lot of PR I mean you're doing everything social networking you are going overseas and you're doing your grind how easy or hard, hard is it to be an independent artist now I mean real talk it is extremely difficult it is not an easy task you know what I'm saying you have to absolutely have an equal amount of faith as you do anything else I mean because there's a lot of moments where you're just you just have to believe in why and what it is you're doing if I wasn't making music that mattered to me I probably would have given up years ago because you know you know, we're sold these ideas about the American dream and, and what it is we should, our, we don't necessarily have uh, realistic expectations. You know, we have these desire to be, these desires to be famous and to be, you know, and I have to always remind myself that while I believe this music should be heard in a major way on a pop level, it's not the reason I'm making this music. So, Tonight, the crowd that was here, for example, what was the primary outstanding thing about tonight was I really felt like everybody was moved. That was important to me. Because it could have been packed with a bunch of people that didn't care and weren't listening and didn't receive anything. But it was very, very powerful and I felt like I was a part of something. You know, so the indie grind is, is difficult, but it's also not brain surgery. It's a balance. You know what I'm saying? That's it's not a mystery, but it takes a tenacity. It takes a focus. It takes a willingness to suffer for what you believe in, you know. What does soul music mean to you? Soul music is not just a genre. For me, soul music it are people that perform from their soul. I made that decision years ago that soul music wasn't what just appeared to be like R&B. You know, because I thought, like, why, why do I connect with Bruce Springsteen? Why, why do I connect with, you know, Bono and Sting? Like, they're not making soul music but they are soul artists they come from a place that's just like like they mean it you know what I'm saying so for me soul music are those people that really mean it they really are what they're singing about you know what I'm saying so that to me that's true soul music gotta do it again for another dish of the pace report reporting live here at SOB's here in New York City I like to personally thank Miss Maya as a singer for her time as well as the staff and management here at SOBs. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Oh.